well, I had no idea what Prime was. That had to be explained to me. What is it? It's a drink. Do you know like anything about its history or? No, except that Darren's children are very keen on it. My children are obsessed with Prime. Every time I pass the shop that sells Prime, they want me to buy them some. They really like it. So I thought, I know. Why don't we use a drink that contains an electrolyte as a battery electrolyte? Because my day-to-day -day interests are in batteries, not in drinking Prime. So you think this is going to get them interested I, in batteries? I think this might interest it, finally get them interested in my day job. So today we're going to make a battery and we're going to reproduce one of the very first batteries ever made by Alessandro Volta. Alessandro Volta is famous because we now named the Volt after him. We're going to do things with a little twist, a modern twist. We're going to use this stuff, Prime, as the electrolyte in the battery. So you've never tasted this drink? No. What one? What one do you fancy? Um, you want uh, lemon and lime or ice pop? I'll start with lemon and lime. Okay. So battery contains two electrodes where half reactions happen and there's some electrolyte in there where ions transport happens. So we're going to see what happens when you use Prime, this energy drink, as the electrolyte in one of the first kind of batteries that was ever made. And who's this bunch of jokers? So we have... Jack. I'm Will. I'm Adi, sir. And we're going to use coins as the electrodes. And we'll talk about the chemistry that's happening in the battery as we go. We're going to get our two electrodes. So in this particular version of the battery, we're going to use zinc and copper. We have zinc washer. This is the copper electrode. The zinc and copper are held apart from each other by the electrolyte. So we've got some paper here and we're cutting it to the right size, about the size of the coin, so that there's a good path for ion conduction. So we're going to put some prime in here. This is an aqueous electrolyte. So this is, contains our ions in water. In modern batteries, not all electrolytes are aqueous. In our lithium ion batteries, they're not. Okay. So we're going to soak our separator in that and then keep building. And here is our electrolyte. So we've got our prime, which is soaked on this paper, or soaked into the paper, I should say. And then the zinc and the copper are separated from each other. They don't touch directly but we have an ionic conductor separating them. And the ionic conductor in this case is prime because it's got an electrolyte in it. And electrolytes carry electricity. What, sort of, what electrolyte has that got in it? This has got different things in it. I can't read it very well because I have to have my reading glasses on, yeah. but there's definitely some citric acid in there. There's some potassium phosphate. So these things in the solution, the phosphate and the potassium ions separate from each other and they can actually move in the electrolyte. So what we're doing now is we're gonna make a stack of individual cells. So more zinc, more prime, more copper, and then we just keep going and building cell on top of cell. And we see how much energy we can get out of this thing. We've made several cells here. We've stacked them on top of each other. So we've got an electrical contact here to our piece of aluminium foil, which is connected to this half of the cell right at the bottom. And we're gonna connect the voltmeter, the other part of the voltmeter, to the top of the sandwich. Right. Two volts. Two volts so far. Is that good? It's pretty good. That's pretty, That's good. pretty good. Let's keep going. Keep building that bad boy. Let's get that voltage up. Right. More copper, more zinc, more separator, more electrolyte. Well, I've now seen two examples. What do you think about making a battery with it as the electrolyte? Or? Well, it depends how acid it is, is the answer. I've always wanted to make a really big battery, enormous one, but I think Darren is, and his colleagues have been a bit more modest. So effectively what happens is electrons, as the cell discharges, electrons get released from the zinc. So the zinc gets... The silver, the, the washers. The, the washers. So the zinc gets oxidized, releasing electrons. Those electrons go through the wires to the copper side. And then on the copper side, what happens is hydrogen ions in the electrolyte get reduced, releasing hydrogen molecules. A little bit of hydrogen gas gets evolved. That's the basic chemistry. And then, of course, the circuit is completed by ion transport 
within the electrolyte. That's what the electrolyte is doing. It allows ion transport between the two halves. If it wasn't in there, the cell just wouldn't work. But the zinc and the copper are already touching each other. Is that where the transfer is happening or is it happening? These are individual cells. What we're doing is we're stacking them on top of each other to boost the voltage. So what counts as a cell? A cell counts as the paper is the middle of a cell. Exactly. Yes. Right. Yeah. As you can see, as we keep building, we've got more cells in. Have we boosted the voltage? What was it last time? Two volts? Yeah. Let me switch up the six point seven six. Six point seven volts. Okay. Pretty good. I've specially washed my teacup for Brady. Always put the top back on the reagent bottle. Big sip. Go on. It's awfully sweet. But it's it's unobjectionable, I suppose. I'm not sure I would drink it for pleasure, but it's I've drunk worse things. The beauty of this battery is it doesn't contain any hazardous materials. It has an aqueous electrolyte, copper coins, zinc washers, nothing hazardous. This is very different from what's in our lithium batteries, in our phones and laptops and all of those. They contain a very reactive metal, that is lithium. The reason we use lithium is it's so reactive, it really wants to give away its electrons. Oh, yeah. Uh, not, does that say 9.5? Yeah. 9.5 volt battery. Okay, so what we've got here is, we're using green, blue, and red prime, but what we thought would be nice to do is, We've got some little lights here, green, blue, and red. Oh, look, you're, you're always yeah. thinking, Darren. Yeah. And we're going to see, can we light these up using our battery? Let's see. All right. Do we have enough power? Hey. Oh, look, look at, at that. that. Look, oh, it's amazing. I'm blinded. Wow. So we have made electricity using an electrolyte dissolved in these drinks. And that's basically how batteries work. A simple oxidation reaction combined with a simple reduction reaction. They're not always the same chemistry in different batteries, but the principles are basically the same. All right, let's try the other one. Let's try the ice pop. I quite like the ice pop. Probably means I'll hate it. <laughs> oh God. Neck it. Reminds me of medicine when I was a child. I wouldn't drink this one. Tastes distinctly funny. But perhaps young people like it. Click the links on screen or in the description for some extra footage as we up to the ante. We even managed to perform some calculations with our prime battery. Two square root. Look at that. You'll also get a better look at the hydrogen that's produced, as you can see here. This episode of Periodic Videos was filmed at the University of Nottingham. Learn more about opportunities to study at the university in the video description. And why not check out our other videos? For example, did you know we've made one about each of the 118 elements on the periodic table? There's a whole playlist of them. I'll link to that also in the usual places.